Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Shreeni here. And today we're going to continue with the next video in the JavaScript playlist series. So we are going to look at an example of JavaScript. But in this particular video, we're going to focus on the different types of variables in JavaScript. So let's get started with today's agenda. Today's agenda is on variables in JavaScript. So there are three different types of variables we are going to look at in today's session. One is let, where, and const. Okay. And we will directly go on to the hands-on coding now onto the variables. So let's get on to the Visual Studio code. So we had created a first JavaScript file in our previous session that was first js.js. Okay. So this is a file which I have. It just has one console.log statement for printing something. Right. Now, what I would be doing is I'll be introducing the three different types of variables and I'll also explain how they work. Okay. So let's say we are having one variable declared with var. Let's say var v1 equal to 10. Okay. So in JavaScript, how it is differing as compared to other programming languages like Java, for example, right? JavaScript is dynamically interpreted and it doesn't need to mention the type. So as you would have seen here, I have not mentioned any type here, whether it's an integer, number, right? Or a string, boolean. I have not defined any type for the variable v1. But as soon as I do a mouse over, the compiler or the compiler, the interpreter, I would say, JavaScript interpreter is so uh, intelligent enough to find out that this particular value which is stored is actually a number, right? And let's just take another example where v2 equal to 10.5, right? And just let's do a mouse over. Again, the type is uh, identified as a number. Even though it's having a decimal value, it doesn't differentiate that, okay, it's a decimal, so I should use like in Java, we have float or double. Here it just treats it again as a number. Okay. Now let's get on to the actual particular part of this. Now, can I try to declare where v1 again equal to 20? So you see that I've tried to declare and instantiate the same variable again. Right. There is no error. Okay. There is no error because this particular v1 scope can be redefined throughout the entire file, whatever JavaScript file we are having it within. It is having the scope as the complete file. Okay. Now let's take an, another example of let keyword. Okay. Uh, this all are keywords basically. var let. These are the types of variable. Now I'm going to have v3 equal to let's say 15 for now, and let's do the same thing with let. Let's try to see if we can redefine it. And you see that we are getting an error. It says we cannot redeclare a block scope variable because this is a block scope. Let is always like a block scope variable. Whereas the where is like a file scope variable. It will be throughout the file. Its scope would be there. Okay. Block scope variable type. And for where it is actually file scope. This is the basic difference between where and let. Okay. Now let's look at another type which we have mentioned as a part of our today's session that is const, right? Now, if I say const c1 equal to 40, what it ideally means is that we can't change the value throughout the execution of our program. Okay, that means till the end of the file, I can't reassign c1 to some other value. It will throw an error. Okay, so let's try to look at that. So now if I try to say, for example, let's try to print it and let's try to see what is the output. So here, let me try to comment it because this is showing an error. Okay, and let me just say here as console.log c1. Okay, and let's print all the values here. So I'm going to print here, let's say v1. I've redefined the value for v1. Okay, and how do we basically pass Apart from the value, if you want to pass some string value, let's say I want to say v1, right? So I can write like this and like we do it in Java language or for those who don't know about the basics of Java, we write any string which we want to be as a part of this method or the parenthesis. And then after that, we put a concatenation or a plus operator. And then we can append the value of the variable which we want to print, right? So I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm just going to copy this line and I'm going to print it here for c1 okay and let's just try to run the program so how do we run the program that's going to be yeah so just a minute okay. this is two times 
So how do we run the program? That's going to be something which we'll be learning as a part of today's topic. So let me show you how to run it. So once you have defined your code and we have just looked at so far the variable types on a very high level and we've looked at the constant. So constant value can't be changed, but we will look at it when we run the program, what happens, right? So click on this terminal, go to new terminal. This is the first way how you can go about and do your execution, okay? So once you open the terminal, it will open like a PowerShell window here and you will be in the same directory where you are having all your code present at. Now, the way we run the program is that we need to write this node through node.js, we are going to do execution, right? So for the node, it's going to take the current directory, which is this JavaScript files inside that. Now, do you see this first js.js is within any particular folder here? No, right? Let's create a new folder for a time being. And let me say as SRC. But my first js.js is with outside SRC. It's not within SRC. So I'm just going to say here first js.js. And do you see, look at here. We got an error when we run the program, right? When we ran the program, we are getting an error at line number 10, right? It's not giving any compilation error, but when we run it, as we told, it's not going to be compiling. It's just going to be a dynamic interpreting. When we run the program, it's going to interpret and give us the output, right? So at this particular point, at line number nine, line number 10, we are getting an error. It says that assignment to a constant variable because it doesn't allow the constant variable to be reassigned, right? So this is going to throw us an error. So we need to comment it for now. And then we can just run the code again. So let's just run the program again. And here we go. We have printed the output and congratulations. We have got the first output for our JavaScript file, right? And this is very basics we are getting started with just to get comfortable, right? Now let's look at what are these ones which are in green color, yeah? So this is a very first session. So I don't want to go too much depth of topic, right? So I'm going to go step by step. What we have seen so far in today's session are how we are declaring the type of variable as VAR. Let, we saw the difference of file scope and block scope. Then we saw that for a const variable, we cannot reassign a value once it is initialized, right? And one more thing I want to tell you is that if I just say const C2, if I just give a declaration, see, this is also throwing an error. We cannot simply have declaration for a const variable. We always, need to initialize a const variable, right? Otherwise it will throw a compilation error at the time of not even compilation at the time of saving the file itself, you'll be getting an error indicated by this red color, right? Great. And apart from that, we also saw that we can write some statements and then we can append using the plus operator. This is what we have seen the basics so far. Now, only the last part, which I want to mention in today's session would be that how do we write comments? So we can write comments as we write in Java programming language, similar way. We can put a double forward slash and whatever you write after that is going to be treated like a comment. So it's not going to interfere with your execution. When you run this program, it's not going to cause any trouble whatsoever. So let's just do it run once one more time. And here we go. We didn't get any error and our Comments are also retained. So this comments really helps the programmers and also the other team members to look at someone else code and understand what this particular block of code or what this particular function or any kind of statement is doing, right? So I hope today you like today's session and tomorrow or in the next session, what we'll be doing is we'll be continuing with the other topics of JavaScript. So stay tuned for that. And thank you so much for watching the video.